Hey, Bulls and Bears, you're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust. I'm your host. My name is JJ. Thank you for being here. And of course, we've got more huge economic news to get into, financial news. Um, I was watching some videos earlier today on YouTube. And um, if, you, uh, if you have the setting to where recommended videos will automatically play, about three prepper videos came up in a row. And the theme behind, I think, two out of three of those was buy food now, buy food now, because the banks are going to fail. And I was thinking, if banks fail, wouldn't that be deflationary and wouldn't the cost of food come down because less people have credit cards from their bank to go buy food with? And then I was thinking, well, the panic could have people, you know, rush into stores and, you know, grab all the stuff like we've seen these videos where stores get looted. So a lot of crazy things going on right now. I'm not sure which direction to go as far as prepping. I do try to get a little extra canned goods each time I go to the store. I've been doing that for a couple of years now. But today we're going to talk about the prediction here that 190 more banks or additional banks are going to fail or could fail in their words. Now, these aren't my words. This is actually a study that was put out by a group uh, and an economist here. And uh, if you want to read it yourself, just go over to USA Today and they talk about this uh, the study here that was put out. And we're going to talk about the reasoning behind the study and uh, why they're saying here that 190 additional banks could collapse. Uh, here's this one out of USA Today. Let me just bring it up here to prove that I'm not making this up. Uh, U.S. banking crisis close to 190 banks could collapse according to study. Well, I think it could be more than 190 because the banks are technically insolvent. Uh, they would have to print trillions of dollars to uh, make these banks actually safe. Um, but then what happens when you print that much money? Then you have inflation. And supposedly there's a fight against inflation right now which is a whole nother topic, which is ridiculous. But um, so let's talk about home prices real quick before we get into the banks. So the Fed is supposed to be supposed to be fighting inflation. We saw home prices tick up actually here uh, in the last month and um, indicating, you know, that the inflation uh, is still happening in many areas, including housing. But yet the Fed's talking about slowing down rate hikes and possibly ending rate hikes pretty soon. Well, if home prices are still going up. If the cost of living hasn't come down, why would they be talking about that, right? So even the things that they're telling us really don't make any sense. That's why you try to have to read between the lines, read between the lies, and um, you know do your own analysis, right? So let's analyze the study here about the 190 banks, possibly uh, additional banks failing, you know, besides the ones that have already failed. Um, Bloomberg reported this also uh, recently, and they had a... Uh, segment on PacWest Bank, another bank that's likely going to fail. We also have Western uh, is it Western Alliance out there. But the study says that 196 more banks at risk of failure, even if only half of their uninsured depositors withdraw their money. Only half of uh, the uninsured depositors. And by uninsured, they mean people with uh, more than $250,000 because that's typically what you're safe up to 250000 with the FDIC. Well, that all got changed a couple months ago because even multi-billionaires, that's billionaires with a B, ended up getting bailed out and basically refunded for the funds that they would have lost with the failure of Silicon Valley Bank, right? So we could see these rules that are in place are not really rules because they can just change them at the last minute. So when you have a system like this where they can just change these rules, how do you prepare? How do you prepare for something that's unknown or something that you think is going to happen or that will happen, but then they just change the rules at the last minute? There's no denying it. Gold is hot right now. Prices are soaring and experts are predicting even more to come. Not so long ago, gold reached its all-time high of $2,069 per ounce. And now it's inching even closer to that number again. Bank of America, one of the largest banks in the world, is saying that gold will rise further still to over $2,200 an ounce later this year. So what, right? Well, gold is already a safety net for your hard-earned money. And now when the stock market is all over the place and the value of the dollar is uncertain, being safe counts like never before. Noble Gold is offering a free 5-ounce America the Beautiful Coin for any qualified IRA or 401k rollover. Terms apply. A solid silver U.S. Mint issued coin celebrating our national parks. Free with every qualifying precious metals 401k or IRA rollover. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold Investments. Call 877-646-5347 or go to bullboomgold.com That's bullboomgold 
gold.com link down in the description of this video. It used to be you were protected up to 250,000. Unless you're a multi-billionaire, now you're protected up to infinity because you're systemically important. Kind of like the too big to fail banks. Do you guys see how this works? So the more money you have, the more uh, relevant or the more important you are to society and to the financial system. So if you're a billionaire, you're always going to get bailed out. That's how they twist this whole thing. You guys see how they twist this to always benefit the people at the top, the top 10%, uh, the mega uh, fund managers, the multi-billionaires. Um, you know, how do you navigate this and how do you try to win in this type of, uh, in this type of setup, right? It's very, very difficult. Now, in my last video, we talked about how banks today, right now, are worse off than they were in 2008. And if you don't believe that, just look at the total number of, uh, of billions that have been uh, reimbursed or pumped out to rescue people, rescue depositors, rescue the banks. Uh, the numbers already exceed 2008. So that's just not my opinion. That's actually the math. That's the numbers. The numbers now are worse already than they were in 2008. And I think that we're just getting started. And in 2008, we didn't have to worry about the inflation like we do now. Back then, prices fell uh, when the bank failures uh, started happening. Uh, lending got really tight and therefore prices fell. Now we still have all these supply chain issues and uh, low inventory in certain categories, causing prices to be very, very sticky, uh, to use the uh, Fed term there, prices being sticky. All right? But if that all wasn't bad enough, uh, the next thing I'm going to mention is another, I think, nail in the coffin here. FDIC is insolvent. We reported um, many times, you know, how FDIC only has, uh, they have less than $200 billion uh, to supposedly uh, insure about $18 trillion, that's trillion with a T, worth of deposits. Uh, so as we see, the math doesn't add up in that. And it's, again, it's not just me saying that. One, it's the math, it's the numbers. But two, it's pointed out here in this article, and it just reminded me, you know, to go ahead and uh, remind everybody of this. And I'll read from this report here, quote, a run on these banks could pose a risk to even insured depositors with those, uh, those with $250,000 or less in the bank. Uh, so let's pause there. They're saying that even with less than $250,000 in the bank, you are not safe. Uh, but again, a multi-billionaire <laughs> with uh, billions of dollars in the banks, you're probably safe, right? Um, continues, as the FDIC's deposit insurance fund starts incurring losses. Uh, losses, what does that mean? That means they're borrowing more money than they have available. They are insolvent. Of course, they don't want you to know that because if everybody finds out, that will uh, increase the panic and that'll increase the likelihood of bank runs happening. Therefore, that'll increase the likelihood of 190, 190 more banks failing, guys. You see how this works? So this is all based on trust and people not knowing uh, the real deal, the real situation. Um, so what if people, more people start realizing the situation and we do start seeing more bank runs, more people panic withdrawing their funds out of these banks? What's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Please let me know what you think down in comments. Some people say that's going to be deflationary because less people able to go into debt because less banks out there to issue the debt. They say that's going to bring falling prices. Other people say it's going to cause such a big panic. It's going to cause inflation and therefore food shortages and runaway hyperinflation uh, because of all the panic out there. Well, you know, if you look at the prepper side of things, they say buy food now. Uh, I try to do a little bit of everything. I don't have, I'm not on one side of the fence or another. It's kind of like politics. I'm not on this side or that side. I just look at each individual item, each individual topic, and uh, figure out you know what makes sense. And that's what we try to do here with the finance. We try to figure out what's going on with the economy, what to believe, what not to believe. Uh, if I had all the answers, I would go out and tell you exactly, put all your money here, uh, because you know this is the one place you're going to go ahead and double, triple, quadruple your money. Um, out of all the people I watch, nobody knows exactly uh, the situation or no one's that confident to tell you to do something like that, right? So it's all be cautious, um, invest here, invest there, be diversified, have insurance in case, uh, you know, something does go south. And when by insurance, I do not, I'm not talking about car insurance. I'm talking about insurance for your wealth. I uh, continue to accumulate hard assets because precious metals, and especially silver, uh, has been 
currency for thousands of years. Uh, gold and silver has been currency for thousands of years. So I continue to accumulate what I think is the most undervalued uh, physical currency asset. Uh, in my opinion, I think that is silver. And I think ultimately after this uh, next financial system is implemented, which is going to be a digital dollar system, I think ultimately we're going back to a uh, hard asset backed uh, currency system. So you're setting yourself up for win, win, win by uh, stacking precious metals. In this case, if you can't stack them uh, by paying money that you have now, because so many people are living paycheck to paycheck, you have the retirement account option or the 401k option like we had uh, or our sponsor in, earlier in this video. Um, so there's plenty of things to think about, uh, plenty of things you can do to start preparing for what's coming, right? Stack food, uh, have hard assets, have some money out of the system. Uh, money will still be used and still be accepted here, I think, during the first few months of this crisis here. Um, but I think ultimately they're going to be right about all these banks failing, this, this 190 or close to 190 banks. I think ultimately it's going to be just a few mega banks that remain as we see the consolidation continue to rise up to the top, uh, the very top tier you know, of society, the multi-billionaire class. All right, folks, we're going to wrap this one up here. What do you think about the study? 190 banks. Is that uh, over paranoid or is that just the tip of the iceberg? Could it be a lot more? Please let me know what you think down in comments. I'll also link to this article, USA Today, which has a link to the actual study. The study, by the way, the study was put out by um, SSRN. So it'll all be linked down in the description of this video, as well as our sponsor. Don't forget our sponsor down there. Help protect your wealth. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Big love. Keep stacking. Bye for now.